Yeah. So Pops, Pops is in a different place. Talk about Pops this time around. Pops has um, kind of formed an army, so to speak, and he is the sar drill sergeant of kittens and puppies and animals that are so cute, they just, their power over humans is unparalleled. And he teaches them to wreak havoc on all humans. So it's, uh, it shows that he's incredibly gruff, kind of mean, very direct, but ladies and gentlemen, he has a heart of gold. He is so sweet inside. Hey, you're so proud of pickles. So from, the, from nobody cares to that. So it's got a wide range this time. Wow. Poppity pops. I mean, I just love the whole concept of the disobedience school. Yes. Um, how much fun? That was inspired, yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, how much fun was that for you? Um, total fun. I mean, it was just gave me a lot of fun things to play off of. And, um, you know, seeing it, you're doing it in the booth and you're sort of imagining all these incredibly cute <laughs> little puppies and so to see it is like a whole nother thing so it's a great juxtaposition to have the super gruff guy with incredibly cute puppies perfect disobedient school now we see a real change in terms of the humans in their lives we mm -hmm. see more humans though maybe not yeah. so much more with pops no. but pops what, doesn't like them <laughs> no but yeah. i mean how do uh, the animals kind of deal with their humans in this in this film? Um, I don't know. I mean, in the first film, they just sort of they just sort of left. The whole idea is the humans are gone, and then and then the, they will play, you know. But you know, I I I like the story arc with uh, with um, Harrison Ford. That that was very cool. That was just fun to hear his voice animated, and it's cool to be in a movie with Harrison Ford. You know? Mm, yeah. Yeah. I thought that was a really nice theme with Max, the idea of just fear and standing up for yourself. Definitely. It's got everything, folks. I can't tell you. I would get a ticket. Why are I'm people... I'm hard selling the movie. <laughs> Why are people crazy about their pets? Um, I think because you just... The tendency to humanize them, you know, behind their eyes. Like, what are they really thinking? And why are they so loyal? And um, our cat, Ginger, stayed up. It was a judgment call. We moved... The family moved to L.A. And Ginger stayed up at our house in Marin County. And we had a house sitter and this and that. And I wouldn't see Ginger for six months. And then I would go down at the gate. And Ginger's like 100 feet away... And I haven't said anything, and it's just meowing and running toward me. So it's those moments you kind of go, really? And then when I was away for a while, then Ginger wouldn't leave my side, would just follow me everywhere. So you just kind of, I think it's the tease of what, what really goes on in the mind of a dog or a cat. Like, you know, how are they processing the world? And I think it's very, you know, I have a friend who thinks his dog can speak, just says, love you really thinks it's like a scooby-doo thing <laughs> so uh, i think that's the temptation about it and um, whatever the reality is who knows but i think that's why this movie resonates with people because yeah our, our, they could see their dog being heroic or fearful or on an adventure you know definitely yeah thank you so much thank you